Hi, I'm Mike Hutchins, Extension Dairy Specialist at the University of Illinois. This module will be a preliminary module to set up this entire session on transition cow. We're going to highlight some of the key nutritional points as it leads into our other lectures. Let's begin by defining our transition period. Most of our lectures tonight will talk about three weeks before calving to three weeks after calving, the key six-week period. This is critical because it will determine the entire profitability of the lactation. Any nutritional management factors that limit peak milk production will decrease the lactation curve. Remember the 200 rule. Every one pound, a decrease in peak milk results in 200 pounds on total lactation. Perhaps even a bigger concern is health problems, which may limit milk production, add additional cost to it, and result in forced culling of high-producing cows. We look for signs for inadequate transition management, such things as high incidence of metabolic disorders, milk fever, ketosis, hypocalcemia would be examples. Also, if cows have poor appetites or low dry matter intakes prior to calving and immediately after calving, which seriously put this cows in negative energy balance. If we have acidosis problems because of poor rumen function or poor ration balance. Also, we may see a loss of body condition score. One guideline is if you lose more than one body condition score in the first 30 days after calving, you will see reduced reproductive performance, which results in poor conception rates and reduced and slower, longer lactations. Jim Ferguson, a researcher from Pennsylvania, reported that nearly half the cows followed in their herds have one or more of these following common health problems. And most farmers would shudder when they see this entire list. We will walk you through the list, but every one of these have significant economic losses, as was discussed earlier in some of our other modules. And as pointed out, this does not even include mastitis. So when we fight one battle, for example, in the uterus, we may have another battle occurring in the udder, and much like the U.S. Army, we don't win all the battles all the time when our troops are spread so thin. Texas researchers did a survey of high-producing cows back in the 19 and 1993. You can see these are the prevalence. These are awfully good guidelines for you as listeners to look at. It says if you're running more than 7.2% milk fever, you probably have a problem on the farm. Look at the tremendous range in these high-producing herds. These herds, by the way, are producing Holstein-wise, in excess of 25,000 pounds of milk. Again, you can see displaced abomasin, 3.3% with a big range. And you could read the rest of the numbers or stop the program at this point to study them a bit closer. But obviously, these are huge numbers and important benchmarks to evaluate your transition program. Look at the sum. Without lameness, nearly 40% of the cows experience these kinds of problems, very close to the Pennsylvania data we just discussed. So the controversy is how do we build feeding programs that meet the cow's requirements? Most of us are pushing what we call a two-phase program, the far-off and close-up dry cow program. However, we see other farmers saying, well, you've got to feed some straw to get good rumen function and fill factors that cut down on DAs. Another group of people would say no transition cow. Put them in the high group three weeks before calving and let them go. Another group of researchers suggests we must limit energy in far-off dry cows so they don't gain excessive weights which tends to lead to higher levels of liver fat. Wisconsin workers say we got to get some fermentable starch in the rumen, and lots of it, to get the rumen really geared up and the rumen papillae stimulated so they're ready to absorb. And finally, another group of farmers say, well, I'm not doing any of those things, and we don't seem to have a problem. But let's look at some of the other sides, it's primarily stress, and it's important in the transition cow. Now, fresh cow limitations. Here we see reported by workers from both Purdue and Kansas. We know that fresh cows have lower feed intake if they are challenged. They just aren't aggressive in the feeding program. We also know they are injured more if they have to compete or fight. They are less likely to compete at feeding stations. They are more quickly fatigued, especially in the hind limbs because of their most recent event of calving. And dominant cows in heat will pick on fresh cows and smaller cows and dominate them. So certainly we have some social factors that really affect the fresh cow as well. So let's kind of put this all together and cap it up as stress in the transition cow. Think about this, what your transition cow faces, and then we'll see how the other modules come into play. First of all, we know we'll have some level of metabolic stress. Hopefully we can minimize that and compare it to our Texas numbers. Certain times of the year we'll have heat stress, which impacts intake and cow comfort. Many of our farms will overcrowd the close-up dry cow area and, and transition period because growth has occurred and that area has not grown. We know we have infectious challenges, both in terms of uterus and mammary gland. We also know we may have suboptimal grouping and cow movement patterns, which means cows are mixed and matched differently in short periods of time. We always struggle with social dominance. 
the boss cow phenomena. We also have uncomfortable housing conditions, especially many times in the fresh cow pen as they leave a bedding pack or a well-bedded area. And unfortunately, once in a while, we'll have some rough handling of transition cows. Let's take a look at some work that comes out of Arizona and New Mexico. While this is a busy slide, the key point is look at the bottom. And we can look at the percent of cows in the herd or in the dry cow pen and see what effects it has on dry matter intake. And you can see somewhere is around 90%, these cows simply tell you and I, we are going to eat less dry matter. Therefore, if we're crowding this facility, we have more stress in that facility, we can see a drop of two to four pounds of dry matter. And that has just metabolic disorders written all over it. Therefore, some of us will recommend no more than 90% of the allotted spaces should be occupied by cows at any time in the transition pens, both pre and postpartum. What does this impact of stress have on transition cows? Well, Jim Drakely, who you'll hear for a little bit later in this talk, lists these stressors. Number one, if the cow is stressed, she will eat less dry matter. Our target goal, trying to get 28 to 30 pounds of dry matter into these close-up dry cows. It will divert nutrients away from health to try to improve the immune system and away from such things as gestation and production. It can reduce milk production. It can interfere with the lactogenic hormones. It can increase fat mobilization. Disruptions can cause normal metabolic shifts and problems in adaptation to the lactation under these various stress conditions. Perhaps Jim's best anomaly is coming up here. Let's look at what he calls the multiple stressors. He calls that the tower of building blocks analogy. So we start out with some type of metabolic stress. This cow has some low level of fatty liver, or maybe she's hypocalcemic. And so we see the response to that stress, you can see is small on the red bar, and our milk production is on the green bar on the right. We now add to that a poor housing environment. Perhaps that has to do with uh, heat stress, that may be a crowded condition, poor footing, poor ventilation. Suddenly you'll notice our green bar, we are our resources for milk production have now given up some and we've added that over here to the, uh, the left side under the, on the stress response. We then go and say we're going to move cows. We're going to put this, this transition cow in a new social structure. She must find her space. Hopefully there's not a bully in the pen. And now again we can see the yellow block again. We lose some of that resource for milk production and add it to our stress response. Now we overcrowd the facility. Very common in many farms here. And finally, it's July, it's August, and we add heat stress on top of this whole block phenomenon. And things happen. And of course, at that point, the system fails. And now we see a major problem. And our cows quickly talk to us and tell us we have a significant problem out there in the program. What a wonderful analogy. And this is just strictly zeroing in on stress. Now, you'll have a chance to listen to some other modules. We have some of the best speakers in the United States presenting these. You can go to the role of dry matter intake by Rick Rummer from the University of Wisconsin, looking at this important aspect of nutrition and stress. We'll look at energy applications from Dr. Jim Drakely. And finally, we'll come back to Dr. Grummer and talk about protein considerations. Well, this completes this module and how this whole evening goes together on Transition Cow. Thanks and have a good day.